Okay, we're going through a Raku Geo Pro FT. Um, we're going to start with here's your bike rack that'll hold you two bike racks. Or your two bikes, not your racks. Here's your power jack on the front. Stand on the tracks. That turns your LED light on in front for hooking up at night. You also have an additional nighttime light here for turning on. This is a uh, auto brake system we've added to this unit to uh, activate your braking as you're traveling. We have two deep cycle marine batteries here and there's a battery disconnect switch right here. Goes on and off. While we're back here, here's your auto change regulator. It's pointed this direction. When you open this tank, it becomes green while there's gas in here. When this gas runs out, it becomes red telling you that it switched to the tank at that, that point, you would just turn this to the other tank. It would become green again. You can disconnect this one and fill it up. Okay. Now, as we proceed down the side of the trailer, this trailer's got rooftop solar panel sander. But there's also an auxiliary input where you can bring a portable solar panel in from the side. Clearance marker for while you're traveling. You got four stabilizers jacks like this on all four corners of the trailer. Just an auxiliary storage compartment. Another storage compartment, but this one goes all the way across the other side. This is your power awning. It'll have LED lights built on it. When we go through the inside of the trailer, we'll show you how that operates. This is your main entrance door, your screen door. You push this lever down, it detaches the screen door from the main door. This comes across to close it off so bugs don't get in. And there's your screen door. Now, this is your main lock assembly on this one. You have two key locks. One does this, the same key does this. But this key, you have the only key to, and it drives a deadbolt into the side of the lock like so. There's also where you can preset a digital code to this one for entrance of the trailer. This is your um, steps for the trailer. They go up and lock into place like that. Now they come down like so. Now, if you're not camped at a perfect spot like we are here and you're on uneven terrain, this pin pulls out and adjusts up and down, or this one does, so you can adjust the height of the leg so the steps will stay level. So it's down like so. That's your grab handle, left, and then it turns. 110 outlets. Here's where your exterior gas stove and table amount. And then the connection for it is right under here where it says gas part, and it's right here. This is the outside of your water heater. The only reason you'd be in here is that it comes time to winterize the unit. There's no other reason other than service being there. In this compartment, this is your filter that filters all the water coming through the trailer. It is replaceable and we do stock those units. Now, as we continue on, we are talking about winterization. Here's the antifreeze inlet port. This one here is your black tank flush, which rinses your black tank out when you're dumping the trailer. This is your city water inlet here that brings fresh water in if you're in a nicer campgrounds where you can hook a hose directly to the unit. Then you also have a satellite inlet and a cable TV inlet. <clears throat> Lighter goes to the top. You do have your rooftop solar panels up there. This unit is pre-wired. If you choose to add a better backup camera to it, it costs about $575. As we continue on, again, you got stabilizer jacks on all four corners. Here's where your trailer dumps the waste out. This cap comes off by turning this. The sewer hose will hook onto here then. This black valve is your black tank. That dumps your toilet out. Then you see there's a valve over here that you pull and that's gray because that's for your shower and your sinks. That's your gray water. They both come through the same hose. So dump this one first, dump that one second to rinse it out. Now here's where your power cord is going to hook onto the trailer. Okay. 
It's inside. I'm not going to use yours so we don't end up with it. This is an access panel for service for the refrigerator. You should not have to be in there. You drain your fresh water tank if you're not going to use it for a while. You oh. drain, drain problems right back here. <laughs> As we continue, there are a couple items you might consider purchasing for your trailer. These are wheel locks. They're $7.99 a piece. They lock in place like that. The other thing that you might consider is a screen to keep bugs and insects and everything out of your furnace. This and mount over the top of that. Stay on it at all times. That's about $26. Now, this is where you fill your freshwater tank. If you're going to camp at campgrounds without um, hookups. And you do have to have the pump on to operate this way. If you're hooked to the city water, you do not turn the pump on. This compartment is where your outside shower is. So you got hot and cold mixer valve and six foot of hose that pulls out. And as we continue up, just this is that other side of that pass through storage that goes all the way across. Another front stabilizer, additional storage spot. Now there's one thing we just overlooked here, unfortunately. This is your exhaust fan exit. To open this, you squeeze those two so you're, while you're cooking and exhaust to the outside. It is critical though that you must close that when you transport down the road. Otherwise it will keep jiggling and come loose. These black things at the top are rain gutters that shoot the water away from the trailer as it's raining on a heavy rain. So that's pretty much everything on the outside of this unit, so let's go to the inside. Come to the inside of the trailer. Uh, start with these are little TV trays that hook into the bed, uh, the couch here. I'm sorry. And you go the right direction, they pop right off. And we'll set it right there all the way for now. This unit also has a footrest that pops open by just pulling that lever. To put it back down, you must pull it this way. It pushes down, and locks into place. Now this unit's got Murphy bed in it. So you'd unhook this latch and this latch. You grab the strap on the sofa here, because the sofa must lay flat, okay? While we got the sofa down, here is USB charging ports, and that's where you push the button to turn your power inverter on and off. The power inverter will run. <coughs> the power inverter <coughs> will run the all that's in the unit, when you're not plugged into 110 ohm power off the battery, converting the power. But it will not run the TV, I will not run the air conditioner, and it will not run the microwave. Now, to put the bed down, all you do is grab this portion here and pull it towards you. And it sits right down like so. You're down, and you got your bed. Now, there's one trick to putting the bed up. There's a safety lock so the bed doesn't go up by itself. That must be pulled out, and it lifts up. The couch goes up, and then the travel locks get hooked. Let's just go like that, and that. You have interior lights here, but we're going to go to the control panel right here and turn that switch on. So interior lights, porch light awning light then you also have the water pump if you were using the onboard water the gas hot water heater or electric hot water heater and then this is the extension for the awning and then this is your battery fresh water black water and gray water tanks let me turn the battery on so everything's activated i'll be right back there's the thermostat for the furnace you turn that on to the temperature setting. You hear the blower kick on, goes to the lighting mode. It takes about 60 seconds. If the battery's got enough power in it, it'll allow the furnace to light. If the blower comes on and it doesn't light, chances are your battery's too low. Now, as we come down here, you've got reset for your ground fold outlet. A little shelf that pops up. Now to release the shelf, you lift up and push both these in at the same time, and it folds down. Now, <clears throat> when you're using the sink, 
pulled on. System is all flushed, ready for operation. Now in the stove, that turns the exhaust fan on that we open to go to the outside. If you don't do that, it just recirculates through the carbon filter. This also turns the light on here. Get these out of our way. This is your stove top. You must kick this up to use the stove. You cannot use it with the glass down. You take the light position, light your burner, and at which time you can go to anything on there once you've lit the burner. All three of these are independent, must be lit separately. Now, here are all of the remotes for the trailer. The TV remote, stereo remote. It's pretty simple, on, like on the TV, you just turn it to on, when the light comes on, and you're off and running. Stereo, same thing. Let me shut the TV off. And you just turn the stereo on, and it's activated. And then it's got a cheat sheet here to teach. A cheat sheet here to teach you how everything works, and the Bluetooth, and all the other things. There's all kinds of techie things if that's what you want to run. Now this turns the Wi-Fi extender on and that's the code to operate the Wi-Fi sender. That's your security code for it and it is encrypted. Now behind the TV there's a little switch right here and that is your booster amp and that green light must be on or it won't amplify your signal. Okay. Now right below this is your gold pearl control module for the solar panel. When the battery is fully charged, it'll show. Right now you're getting four and a half amps off the sun. It's 100% of capacity. And it should switch to how much amp hours they use. So you get 260 amp hours and 3.1 volts. That's when you're fully charged. Uh, all these lights have independent push buttons in them to shut them on and off. Now, here's your microwave. Standard microwave. Everything's pretty straightforward. The only thing is you probably want to take that glass tray out as you're traveling down the road. Now, <clears throat> your refrigerator. It's very straightforward, very simple. Turn it on. It goes to the auto mode. Auto mode will go to gas. If it doesn't find gas, it'll go to 110. If it doesn't find 110, it will go to battery. If you want it to operate on gas only, you push that button and the gas comes on. If it does not, light a check light will come on. Now, if we open this, <clears throat> here is your temperature slide bar here that goes up and down. That sets the temperature in there. The higher it goes, the colder it gets, okay? One ten circuit breakers for all your outlets, air conditioner, microwave, refrigerator, and um, microwave, and then these are all your twelve volt fuses for all your other items in the trailer. There is a little fan on here, so if you're plugged into power and you start running a bunch of stuff, this fan will come on. This here is your LP gas carbon monoxide sensor. Must be flashing green. If it's flashing yellow, your voltage is low on your battery, and it's going to start to chirp. If it squeals, it's going to become red, and that's sensing car, uh, LP gas or carbon monoxide. So let's proceed to the bathroom. Well, we got there the angle. This is your foot flush for your toilet. Okay. Minimum water flush. The longer you hold it down, more water comes in. Now with that toilet, there's a couple things that we need to do. You have to. Behind the toilet. No. We have to come here. You have to make sure you use a RV style toilet paper. It's a little expensive at $4.99 a four pack, but it will dissolve if you're using a proper chemical that goes with it so that it doesn't come out in solid chunk form. It comes out in a liquid and makes a bad job easy. Now, on this switch here, this activates the light in the bathroom and powers your fan. This is a high volume 12 volt fan, opens and closes by putting this knob up, turning it clockwise or 
counterclockwise. Then you have on and off on the fan here, and one, two, three speeds of on the fan. Okay, and then it shuts off right there. It does have a rain cover on, so you can only leave it open when it is raining. Now on the shower, <coughs> it's pretty straightforward. It's got what they call an aqua view. Okay, and what that is, is this a handle here. You set your temperature and everything on it. And once you're, if you want to stop the water flow, you just print that lever down and it stops the water flow and it keeps your mixture the same so that you don't have to remix it to get the right temperature. And you can lather up, do what you want, and then turn that back on so it keeps the temperature so that way you'll use the minimum amount of water. A little storage bag. And that's pretty much it, other than here's like a vent down here for the, um, furnace so it keeps it warm in here also other items here's a hand crank for putting the stabilizer jacks down this is your power cord that we talked about so it's in here it's ready to go and here's the forest river bag they give you and it's got all the paper items everything relating to anything on the trailer and every component how the bike rack ties on extra cables. I'm going to put both remotes in this bag for you so they don't get lost. Right there. And we'll set it right with your power cord here. Uh, the windows, these crank open by just turning the knob. Okay. Like so. It's shade. It just pulls down. And then if you pull down again, it goes right back up. The one by the sink is a metal blind, okay? The other window over here is a fire exit. So this one's slightly different. Rather than cranking out, it lifts up, pushes out, locks in like so. And then there's a red tab here. You can pull this and climb out the window if need be. And that's it.